My name is Hans Kierstedt. I'm the chairman and CEO of Avita Biomedical. Avita Biomedical is a platform vaccine company. We have a COVID-19 vaccine in late stage clinical testing, four cancer vaccine studies in 17 clinical sites. All of our vaccines emanate from a core set of platform technologies using dendritic cells. And we surround that with in-house manufacturing, regulatory, quality, and clinical operations. This is a snapshot of our clinical programs. Our most advanced cancer program is in Japan. The phase one and the two phase twos were run here in the United States, but we ported that to Japan to take advantage of their expedited regenerative medicine pathways for phase three and clinical trial approvals. So we have a final approval coming up just, we believe, in April that will be a clinical trial notification for a final contingency study of safety as a primary outcome on under 20 patients of the Japanese race, a contingency that's required for all drugs coming into the country. And that is a prelude to commercial approval of our drug there. In the United States, we have just finished the patient follow-up for a phase two in glioblastoma multiform for progression-free survival with tremendous data and are now um, applying for phase three permission. In ovarian cancer, we have a phase two going on as well with six clinical sites recruiting. That's about 40% done, no clinical data yet. And then we've also been approved for a phase one, two clinical trial, combining this platform vaccine technology with checkpoint inhibitors. And then lastly, and perhaps most excitingly in the near term, we have a clinical trial that's phase one, two, and three for COVID-19 taking place in Indonesia. This COVID-19 vaccine begins with a blood draw from the patient which we extract monocytes and mature them into dendritic cells. We then add multiple SARS-CoV-2 antigens, full length spike one and two proteins, and that results in an antigen presenting cell with a full complement of sensitivity to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It is the patient's own personalized vaccine. And the advantage here is that the dendritic cell can hold an enormous antigenic payload, larger than any other vaccine, so one can actually add all existing and future mutants of this virus to the single vaccine and even add other indications like the flu. It's a unique vaccine also in that it is the antigen presenting cell, that orchestra conductor of the symphony that is your immune system. All other vaccines work by firstly genetically engineering your muscle to then over secrete huge amounts of excess SARS-CoV-2 antigens into your bloodstream, some small percentage of that gets into antigen presenting cells in situ. Proteinaceous types of vaccines skip the genetic engineering, but they also flood your blood with huge amounts of SARS-CoV-2 antigen. Again, some small percentage of that getting into the antigen presenting cell. Avita's COVID-19 vaccine is the antigen presenting cell and it is your antigen presenting cell. So theoretically, we would skip this genetic engineering and excess loading of the blood with SARS-CoV-2 antigens, both of which are associated with adverse events. We've run a preclinical mouse study at the request of the US FDA in which we see what we expect to see with a dendritic cell vaccine. Dendritic cell vaccines directly trigger a cellular immune response and indirectly trigger an antibody response. So theoretically, one would expect a very robust and statistically significant cellular response, which we see in the two graphs on the right-hand side of the screen with high statistical significance. One would also expect a variable antibody response because this type of vaccine does not directly stimulate B cells. Free-floating antigen in the blood, like in the other vaccine types, do directly stimulate B cell and plasma secretion of antibodies. We don't do that as a primary um, effect of vaccination. So as expected by basic biology and here shown in a mouse study, we have excellent induction of cellular immunity, which is of course the precursor to memory, and a variable antibody response. We see very many advantages in 
the way that we are distributing this vaccine. We actually don't make the vaccine. We make a kit so that points of care can make the vaccine. We ship that kit to hospitals or laboratories, rural medical centers, even pharmacies. And we can do that with shipping conditions that are advantageous. So we are just concluding validations to ship at room temperature for both delivery and storage using lyophilized components. We have a fully closed system. So there is no need for biological safety cabinets at the point of care. We have only the requirement right now of a centrifuge, which we will soon make redundant with a small piece of plastic called a cyclonic separator. And we need a warming surface there, which should be the bottom of the uh, kit itself soon. The kit storage again, room temperature, final product is stable in a refrigerator, standard refrigerator can actually sit on a shelf for days without going bad. And the technical ability at source is basically the ability to work a syringe. So the patient comes in, gets a blood draw, seven days later, or eight, or nine, or 10, or a week later, can come back on their own schedule and get a single shot subcutaneous. The advantage of this kit concept is multiple. We have no CapEx. There is no centralized manufacturing facility. So we don't have that centralized multi-billion dollar manufacturing facility that has to be scaled. We have distributed unlimited production in kit assembly plants across the world. And as the kits are made on demand, there's no need to waste stock. If we want to put in a different um, antigen set, well then we do. We just simply build those kits and send the correct antigens for the more recent mutation. There is no stock wastage. Perhaps the greatest advantage of our vaccine is that it serves as a regional economic boost. When a country exports billions of dollars to a company offshore, it gets its population vaccinated but it loses those billions of dollars. And that is not a sustainable thing for over half of the world to endure. We enable the kits to be made at point of care in any country so that we can actually meet local demand using local resources. We create jobs, we can purchase about 90% of the kit components from most second world countries and of course first. So that billion dollars turns into not only taking care of your people, but also an economic stimulus for your region. And interestingly, there's no biotech experience required for our partners that we are seeking, as we only require the ability to fund kit development, track orders and deliveries. We have clinical trials going on in Indonesia, which is unfortunately at an infection rate that is many times that of the United States and it is fully funded by local partners for phase one, two, and three. The phase one is completed, and I'm happy to report that we have the least adverse events and of a lower grade than any other vaccine on the planet. The phase two is underway, and preliminary efficacy from our phase one patients looks absolutely excellent. We are positioned for growth with a pre-approval for phase three based on transitional data with both ELISA and LE spot efficacy outcomes in addition to safety. So we're very excited to see this trial go to emergency use authorization and flip into vaccine orders in short order. We've also been working with the US FDA and are just submitted a response that we believe checks all the boxes that they asked for and of course supplementing that application with human data from our phase one trial both in safety and in efficacy from Indonesia. Our cancer vaccine uses the same approach of a dendritic cell base, but of course the antigen load is unique. In this case, we use the seed of cancer, which is the cancer stem cell or tumor initiating cell. These cells comprise one to 3% of every solid tumor type. And we are the only group in the world that has been able to extract them from resected tumor, purify them without differentiation and load them into dendritic cells for a vaccine against your tumor-initiating cells. So this is really a neoantigen story. 
where we do not pick one or two or three neoantigens, we know and respect that everyone's cancer is unique. Your cancers have thousands of unique mutations that mine don't have. Everyone's are very different. So biology chooses these antigens and we listen. We load everything from the ticks only into the dendritic cells, which can express thousands of proteins. We put them into dendritic cells and we consider ourselves the third generation of this technology. The first, of course, by Dendrion, where they used dendritic cells and loaded them with a single synthetic peptide. The dendritic cells did their job in inducing a very robust immune response against those peptides, but unfortunately, less than 5% of people had those peptides. That then led the field to move on to whole tumor in an effort to broaden the efficacy. Immunocellular, Northwest Bio, Argos, they used whole tumor antigens. The dendritic cells did their job in mounting a very robust immune response against those antigens, but unfortunately, 99% of a tumor, those cells that are not ticks, look a lot like the rest of you, and those induced much adverse events and serious adverse events and very low signal to noise. So we are using the seed of cancer only, the tumor initiating cells, which nothing in your body looks like. They're very, very particular and they're very, very particular to you. So this is done in a manner where our direct cost of goods is under $10,000 unscaled and it will be well under $5,000 scaled. It is based on a, a technology that we know works. And in fact, this is our data where we ran two phase two clinical trials in the United States in melanoma and saw a two year overall survival of 72%, five year of 54%, a very superior overall survival to any other treatment. We've just concluded analyses of progression-free survival in our phase two study and have a final data set that shows a 45% increase in the duration of survival and that taking us to the end point of our trial but probably more importantly a data set that indicates 38% increase in progression-free survival that means 38% fewer deaths in our treated patients this is really a remarkable status of data and benefit for this field and as a result we have requested and been granted a pre-phase 3 meeting and end of phase 2 with the United States FDA. I'm very very pleased to be working with colleagues at our world renowned our chief medical officer Dr. Robert Dillman was president of SITSI, executive committee of ASCO multiple terms and is considered one of the leading immunologists in the nation. Gabriel Nistor is one of the most accomplished human stem cell scientists in the world and I'm surrounded by tremendous operating and financial prowess as well. Our board is really honored with the presence of our course series representatives of investors but Philippe Chasson, former president of Allergan, Paul Jenkinson, the former CFO that took Kite public and negotiated their sale of 12 billion dollars to Gilead not so long ago. And Matt Katz who is the CEO of Verify, Visa's um, largest um, financial sector of internet. So thank you very much.